in this video we are going to talk about liquidity risk in the banking book in this chapter we focus on how bank manage liquidity risk the potential short-term cash demands that can be placed upon the banks by depositors borrowers bank owned borrowing activities trading activities counterparty interactions liquidity squeezes leaves bank vulnerable to potential default on their obligations and in some cases trigger bankruptcy also because liquidity demands are difficult to predict in the advance, they present an important risk to bank managers. This risk is usually managed by the bank treasury as part of the assets and liability management function. So in this paragraph, the main important line is liquidity risk is managed by treasury as part of their assets and liability management function. On completion of this chapter, the reader will have an improved understanding of sources and liquidity of uses of liquidity, types and drivers of liquidity risk, add-on cost of liquidity risk, relationship between liquidity risk and 2008 global financial crisis. Then we will cover other also, there are two, three articles, very beautiful articles covered uh, around this 2008 financial crisis also, we will incorporate this also in this walkthrough. Liquidity risk measure, measurement issues, liquidity risk management alternatives, best practices in liquidity risk management, and last is liquidity risk reporting. So we are going to cover all these points. Maybe I have to divide this whole complete video into many parts, but please uh, watch all of them for better understanding. This chapter focuses on funding liquidity risk, the ability of the bank to fund its obligation when they came due. Funding liquidity risk is different from transactional or trading liquidity risk. The ability to trade in markets without significant price concession and from the risk of an increase in security bid offer spread or reduction in market depth for a traded security, which is obviously covered in the chapter 6 of the market risk management book. We are going to cover this also. To meet funding liquidity needs, to meet funding liquidity needs, banks may establish holding of highly marketable liquid, liquid assets that they expect to sell on short term notice to raise funds when they need them. So uh, obviously, so there are two types of liquidity. One is funding liquidity and other they are covering here is uh, market liquidity or they are also using transactional or trading liquidity. So in case of funding liquidity, banks may establish holding of highly marketable liquid assets that they expect to sell on short term notice to raise funds when they need them. Thus, the funding liquidity risk can become related to trading liquidity risk, but these two different types of risk are not the same. So obviously, Funding liquidity risks focuses on the ability of the bank to re to fund its obligations when they come due. But on the other hand, transactional trading liquidity talks about the ability of to trade in market without significant price concessions. Introduction to liquidity risk. Liquidity risk is a risk of not being able to meet obligations when they fall due. So we are not able to meet our obligation when they are falling due. That comes under liquidity risk. The two main main day-to-day -day liquidity obligation that are specific to banks are the ability to refund deposits withdrawal and the ability to fund loan drawdowns. Apart from these two bank specific liquidity obligations, banks encounter the standard liquidity obligation of paying their bills and other debts in contractual and timely manner. Generally, these, become, these issues become problematic for the bank when its liquidity requirements are not known in advance. Some liabilities have scheduled repayment amounts and dates and can be predicted easily but one important liability future deposit levels cannot be predicted with certainty other liabilities such as those created by counterparty failure or market risk in leveraged cash or derivative position cannot be forecasted accurately and therefore can have a significant effect on the liquidity requirement here to mention why liquidity is, liquidity is important because at the time of Lehman Brothers crash, Lehman have assets around 369 billion, if I'm not wrong, and they have their uh, their liabilities around 319 billion, but still they were not able to uh, pay around 3 billion bill. So that's why that's triggered the uh, Lehman uh, whole uh, crisis. Again, coming back to here, we will cover that Lehman again when I'm going to discuss these issues. We'll cover Lehman and Bernstein's also here. Example of bank related events that can stress a bank's liquidity include obligation to fund assets, one thing, maturing bank debt, third, second, third, usually large depositors withdraw potential precursor to a bank run, non-performing assets causing as cash shortfalls, exercise of customer put provisions requiring a bank to repurchase assets, repurchase agreements, future margins, counterparty collateral calls, 
and failure of counterparties to supply collateral. So these are the example bank related event that can stress bank liquidity includes. So again, what are the events that can stress bank's liquidity? Obligation to fund assets, mortgages, maturing bank debt, the unusual large depositors are withdrawing their money, non-performing assets. So we have we have made some loans, but parties are not paying us. So those are non-performing assets. Exercise of customer put provisions requiring bank to repurchase assets, repurchase agreements, future margins, counterparty collateral calls, and failure of counterparty to supply the collateral. So these all will will trigger bank liquidity in one way or another all financial institutions face liquidity problems during 2008 financial global crisis the first major failure of financial institution in the u.s was burn bear Stearns in march 2008 bear Stearns was not a commercial bank but an investment bank or merchant bank and as such faced a broader range of risk than commercial banks which are more heavily regulated and face a more limited range of risk so here in this example they have covered bernstein's but obviously we are going to cover bernstein in details because there is a very beautiful article i have uh, bookmarked somewhere here in this sheet <laughs> example a sudden surge of broad cash outflows from counterparties and customers on thursday march 13 2008 forced Bernstein's to tap JPM Chase and the Federal Reserve for funds to shore up liquidity, the investment bank chief executive said on Friday. During a hastily convened conference call, CEO Alan Skowatz said the bank continued to have very strong liquidity. So these are the big liars. Whenever there are crises, these CEOs, their MDs or directors come in the public and make a false statement. And you will notice it happens all the time. They do this. Te this technique is followed all the time in all the banks, irrespective of their geographical location. But demands from the prime brokerage clients, repo clients, and lenders to cash out the late Thursday forced the move. Said CFO Sam Molinaro, counterparties that were providing secured financing against assets were no longer willing to provide financing. We lost a lot of capacity. At the pace funds were being withdrawn, the firm recognized that there could be continued liquidity demands that would outstrip our resources, said Scowards. Eventually, Bear Stearns resources were outstripped and the bank was bought by JP Morgan Chase in a transaction shepherd Shefforded by the U.S. government, had Bernstein's been able to meet their exceptional liquidity demands, they would not have been forced to sell their assets to JPM and would likely still be in the business today. Under ordinary circumstances, liquidity demands are met through the normal course of business. When a bank struggles to meet its obligation, it may use market liquidity of their assets. The funding liquidity of the bank balance sheet or the contingent liquidity of another financial institution's balance sheet. These three types of liquidity are explained below. So we are going to cover all these types of liquidity. So liquidity is just not only funding liquidity, there are other liquidity also. We are going to cover that. But I am thinking I should add here Bear Stearns article. It should be in this sheet only. Let's see. Uh, 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 mm -mm. Mm, not here, not here. 2000 Global Aid Financial Crisis. Yes, I can cover this article also here. Uh, 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 second one, where is second one? No interbank. We have already covered interbank transactions. Um, bankruptcy versus insolvency. Yeah, this is also a very good thing. We will cover it later. Uh, 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 where is the article regarding bear stands? Um, so unfortunately I'm not able to find those articles here it should be they should be here only favorites is there anything no only global crisis mm -mm. Lehman brother yep if Lehman is here then bear stand should be here also but okay we can cover Lehman and bear stands okay guys the rise and fall of the U.S. investment bank. Lehman Brothers, a fall from the grace. Lehman Brothers stock was selling at $86 a share in February 2007, giving the company a market capitalization of $60 billion. So in the pre previously, I mentioned $369 uh, billion. I don't know. I think it, it, the number is wrong. 
ओके सो मार्केट कैपिटलाइजेशन ऑफ नियरली सिक्सटी बिलियन फॉर द ईयर द कंपनी रिपोर्टेड अ न्यू रिकॉर्ड हाई इन नेट इनकम ओवर फोर बिलियन एंड जनवरी टू थाउजेंड एट लेमन ब्रदर वॉज द फोर्स्ट लार्जर इन्वेस्टमेंट बैंक इन द यू एस इन मार्च इमीडिएटली आफ्टर बेयर स्टेंस द सेकेंड लार्जेस्ट होल्डर ऑफ द मॉर्गेज बैक सिक्योरिटी राइट बिहाइंड लेमन ब्रदर्स ऑलमोस्ट कोलेप्स लेमन स्टॉक ड्रॉप बाय ऑलमोस्ट फिफ्टी परसेंट इन जून टू द कंपनी रिपोर्टेड ए क्वार्टरली लॉस ऑफ टू पॉइंट एट बिलियन सो प्रीवियस डे दे रिपोर्टेड नेट इनकम ओवर फोर बिलियन बट दिस टाइम दे रिपोर्टेड टू पॉइंट एट बिलियन इट्स फर्स्ट क्वार्टरली लॉस सिंस being spun off from american express way back 1994 by the end of 2008 lehman brothers holding had vanished from the investment banking landscapes and the largest corporate bankruptcy filing was 619 billion in debt in us history so yes i think i was right summary lehman brothers began in mid 19th century 1844 to be precise as a general store henry lehman was responsible for the first incarnation of the business his brothers mayor and am amanuel I think if I'm pronouncing this word correctly it should be Emmanuel Emmanuel Uh it is okay let now let did you say Emmanuel Emmanuel joined the business in 1850 laying the groundwork for what would become a financial industry powerhouse In 1990 were a time of great power financial success for Lehman Brothers the repeal of glass steel gull act allowed the company to engage in both commercial as well as investment banking services Move that would ultimately lead to its downfall. Lehman ultimate end came as a result of being utterly overwhelmed by mortgage-backed securities, MBS, that were mostly backed with subprime loans, many of which went into default. The beginnings of Lehman Brothers. Lehman Brothers began in the mid nineteenth century, eighteen forty-four, to be exact. It was started in Montgomery. Montgomery. I am very poor with words. Montgomery, Alabama. Alabama, by Henry Lehman, an immigrant from Germany. From being a dry goods and general store, Henry Brothers Mayer and Emmanuel joined him, giving birth to Lehman Brothers in eighteen fifty. During the eighteen fifty, Lehman began to become a major commodity trading company, specializing in the key cotton market. The company shifted from commodity trading to investment banking, began in nineteen zero six. When it partnered with Goldman Sachs on an IPO between nine zero nineteen zero six and nineteen twenty six, Lehman was involved in underwriting nearly hundred new equity issues, including those of which no, of such notable companies such as F W Woolworth, Stuart Baker, and Massey Department Stores. The history of Lehman Brothers mirrors how investment banking changed and developed in the U S economy. Economy: the company managed to pursue and even thrive through major national upheavals. Upheavals. What it means? Upheavals. Upheavals means there nothing, unfortunately here. But upheavals. Upheavals. Such as the civil war, both world war and the stock market crash of nineteen twenty nine, and the resulting Great Depression. Going through a myriad of myriad myriad. Let's see how this is pronounced. Myriad. Myriad. Yes, I always pronounce this word wrong. Myriad. Uh, going through the myriad of changes, spin-offs, mergers, the company developed into a commodity brokerage and ultimately into a, one of the largest investment bank in the world. Success in the nineteen nineties. Lehman Brothers was acquired by shares in American Express in nineteen eighty four for a reported three sixty million. American Express owned Lehman Brothers from nineteen eighty four to nineteen eighty four, at which time it spun the company off via initial public offering, which attracted more than three billion in the new capital. The repeal of the Glass Steagall Gate Steagall Steagall Glass Steagall act which previously prevented banks from simultaneously conducting com investment and commercial banking business together enabled bank lehman brother to expand greatly by offering both services lehman brother prevailed after the orders of 911 and continued as a dominant force in the investment banking industry and by 2007 lehman had grown to become the fourth largest investment banking firm in the country much of its growth and profitability come from huge investments in the mortgage backed securities ironically these were same investment ultimately that led to the downfall of the company the housing market and the subprime loans lemon so guys here we have cdo and i do have one article here which i am going to cover here not in this video separately talking about cdos Lehman Brother was deeply in, or maybe I can cover this also here. Lehman Brother was deeply invested in mortgage based securities by at that time mid 2000 rolled around the housing loan the housing boom led to over abundance over abundance of both MBS market based securities and CDOs being created and by 2007 Lehman was the great largest holder of MBS. So guys there is CDS there is CDO there is MBS 
and there is securitization these worlds are used so familiar with each other and they have they follow the same uh, track also so i think i should cover them separately in a separate video i'm going to take a screenshot and i will cover them later on in some other video okay lehman was the largest holder of mbs market based security now the icing on the cake for lehman brother was its deep dive into loan origination in 2003 the company incurred a number of lenders several of whom focused on providing the subprime loans that the us government had been pushing since the turn of the century their huge investment in mbs many of which were teeming with subprime mortgage loans in which in what caused the demise of the lehman brother the housing market crash the incredible risky and half-heartedly structured subprime loan bundles were overwhelming the market by 2007 and into 2008 in reality the earliest stages of the crash began as early as 2006 all it took was a slow down in the housing market for default on the mortgage loans to grow in numbers the massive number of subprime mortgages simply could not be sustained however lehman brother continued to deepen their investment in the housing market uh, 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 and mortgages buying up a massive piece of the real estate marketplace with a 2007 receipt for more than 100 billion in mortgage backed securities and assets competition and failure lehman brothers biggest competitor was bear stearns and went down in flames first a federal reserve bank deal enabled jpm jmc to buy jpmc to buy out the company in 2008 the deal though made lehman future uncertain lehman was already in the weakened state after depending on repos for the daily funding The company sought to boost market confidence through equity fundraising in the early summer of 2008. However, the move proved less reassuring when in September Lehman reported an anticipated third quarter loss of nearly 4 billion. On top of this, so this is the icing on the cake. It is it reported a 5.6 billion in the toxic asset write down. The end of Lehman Brother. Lehman stock plummeted some some 77% in the first 7 days of September 2008. Richard Ford the CEO at the time attempted to save face in front of the investor obviously they are going to come up and lie keep the doors open by using multiple tactics including a spin off of the company commercial and real estate assets investors saw lehman for what it was sinking ship the clear signal that investors were running came with the swelling of credit default swaps cds on lehman debt as well as with the bank back tracking of major hedge fund investors the final straw dropped by september 15 when after attempted buyouts rescue both by both bank of america and barclays fell through lehman brother was forced to file for bankruptcy and act that sent the company stock plummeting in 9593% down when it was all over lehman brother was with 619 billion in debts was the largest corporate bankruptcy filing in us history Following the bankruptcy filing, Barclays and Nomura Holding eventually acquired the bulk of Lehman Investment Banking and trading operations. Barclays additionally picked up Lehman New York headquarters building also. Lehman collapse was a major contributor to the domino effect, domino effect of the multiple financial disasters that eventually became the global financial crisis of 2008. Many in the industry still wondered why Lehman was allowed to fail rather than being rescued by the US federal government like so many other banks were. One reason often put forward is simply the massive size of Lehman's debt and woeful inability of its assets to me to begin to cover it. Woeful, woeful. 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 So this was regarding Lehman. But let's cover global financial crisis in some other video because I think this video has become a little longer. The purpose is not to read this. The purpose is to cover this point. So so far, what we have covered here, we we discuss what we are going to cover in the liquidity risk in the banking book. We discuss we will cover this sources and uses of liquidity types of liquidity risk. So far, we have covered this only. In first, we have covered three point one introduction to the liquidity risk. So we covered what is the liquidity risk, and what are the events that can trigger liquidity risk. Then we are going to cover here what are the types of liquidity. When we are discussing these types of liquidity, then obviously we are going to know what is liquidity. We will cover drivers of liquidity risk and sources and uses of liquidity risk might be after this sources of liquidity problems. So yeah, this will be covered in the next video. keep following this whole series thanks for watching so far have a nice great day